the sea can be a challenging environment, even in calm weather. But when storms hit, waves become raging mountains, with the power to turn even the bigger ships into shipwrecks. If you get caught in a storm and in need of help, the RNLI will launch to your rescue. But how can lifeboat crews battle such intense conditions? In the 20 years that I've been on the crew, I have never encountered seas like that. Uh, this is the only, the only shout that I've been on when I've actually had to uh, uh, weigh at risk to rescue her. No, yeah, it was very, very poor. Um, I think it was star nine, star 10. Um, and the approach to the harbour is notorious for getting big seas there. And unfortunately, that's where the boat was as well. It's the one call out that, that we get here that's there's no time for thinking or talking. You just have to get into your gear and go. Um, there's, it's minutes, and once you get there, it's seconds. Um, so a boat broken down at the harbour's mouth in any sort of fresh weather is, is uh, just just get there. Yeah, we saw the boat, yeah, just going a mile in front of us. I uh, thought she was up still in the box. Uh, at that point, Look very close. We immediately requested that the helicopter uh, be launched. And I really didn't think uh, we'd be able to get a line on one with where she was and two with the conditions. It was like a washing machine in the corner. The great water it was. For as long as the RNLI has existed, lifeboat crews have had to tackle all the sea can throw at them. In fact, it's the reason behind our very existence. 1824. Sailing is extremely dangerous. Around the coasts, there are around 1,800 shipwrecks a year. Sir William Hillary witnesses the treacherous nature of the sea firsthand from his home in Douglas on the Isle of Man. He writes an appeal to the nation to try and raise awareness of the problem. Another winter has scarcely yet commenced and our coasts are spread over with the shattered fragments of more than 200 vessels, which, in one fatal tempest, have been stranded on the British shores, attended with an appalling havoc of human life, beyond all present means to ascertain its extent. And shall these fearful warnings also be without avail? Shall we still close our eyes on conviction until further catastrophes ring from us those reluctant efforts, which ought to spring spontaneously from a benevolent people? With the most ample means for the rescue of thousands of human beings from a watery grave, shall we still leave them to their fate? The National Institution for the Preservation of Life from Shipwreck is founded. The charity that would become the RNLI. From the very start, lifeboat crews have faced terrible conditions. Back then, crews would row out in open lifeboats, fighting the elements to try and reach those in danger. Many lifeboat crews lost their lives in the process, making the ultimate sacrifice attempting to save lives at sea. Over the years, the RNLI has worked to make life saving safer, developing newer lifeboats that can self right themselves. Today's all-weather lifeboats can tackle extreme conditions. But how exactly can a lifeboat withstand a storm? Hi, my name is Natasha Banks and I'm a junior naval architect here at the RNLI. As naval architects, we're the design authority on lifeboat hulls, structure, outfit and stability. I'm here today to talk to you about how our lifeboats withstand stormy conditions and allow our crews to carry out their life-saving work no matter the weather. In order for our lifeboats to withstand stormy conditions, there are several distinct design features you can see when walking around our boats. The first and most recognisable of these features is our lifeboat's ability to self right This means that if they are knocked down or capsized during a storm, they will come back upright. When the boat is upright, the weight of the boat in the water is balanced by the buoyancy force of the water pushing back up. In order to ensure our boat's self-right, we must make sure that when the boat is inverted or upside down, these forces are now unbalanced. This is achieved through two key features. 
Firstly, the centre of gravity must be as low as possible. This makes the boat very stable and allows the writing force, which returns the vessel to upright, to be as large as possible. The size of the wheelhouse is also essential and is calculated to ensure it contains enough air to provide a large enough buoyancy force that the vessel is able to right itself. We must ensure our lifeboats are completely watertight, not only if the boat capsizes but also during normal operation. The lifeboats all have a capsize valve connected to a pendulum that closes all vents when the lifeboat is inverted to prevent any water entering the wheelhouse. When operating normally, water ingress is prevented by the boat's watertight doors and the placement of the air vents. These vents are placed on the side of the wheelhouse to minimise any water entry. However, if water does get into the ventilation system, there are drains built in throughout that discharge the water straight back into the ocean. Other features that ensure the water tightness of our vessels are the bulkheads that are found along the length. As you can see behind me, these bulkheads split the vessel into six compartments and allows the boat to remain buoyant even if it sustains damage. On the Shannon, two compartments can fill with water and the boat will still remain upright and buoyant. However, for this to work, all doors must be kept closed when at sea. Our lifeboat hulls are known as hard chine hulls. The chines that you can see here provide additional buoyancy when the boat heels over. These chines also generate dynamic lift as the boat moves through the water, which reduces the required engine power of the vessel. The hull is optimised to minimise slamming, allowing our lifeboats to cut through waves and deflect spray, improving the comfort and visibility in rough conditions for the crews. This is aided by the spray rail you can see around the exterior edge of the forward sector of the boat. If water does end up on deck, the deck has a camber or curve that promotes water running off. Safety features on the deck such as guardrails, lifelines and non-slip surfaces help the crews safely move around on the vessel even in the worst of weather. Another design consideration that we have when designing our lifeboats is propulsion and maneuverability. Our Shannon lifeboats are equipped with water jets and trim tabs that vastly increase the maneuverability of our boats. They allow our helms to have precise steering control at all boat speeds and give the vessel capabilities to move sideways and perform more difficult manoeuvres. When our crews are out in extreme conditions, they must be harnessed into their crew seats. These seats ensure there is no risk of the crew falling over or injuring themselves when going out in heavy seas. These seats have built-in shock absorption to protect the crew from slamming and motions whilst at sea. As the safest place for our crews when operating in the heavy seas is in their seats, we must ensure that all controls are available to them while seated. The human-centred design of these seats ensures this is possible by the addition of the primary functional controls to the armrests of the seats. This reduces the need for crews to unstrap themselves to reach certain critical controls. These seats are also raised to improve the sight lines of the crew when seated. Externally, the lifeboats are also equipped with wipers and searchlights to help improve visibility if the weather is poor. The skipper uh, was on the radio many a time we were in the bay, uh, thanking us uh, so much for what we'd done. Uh, and yeah, so that's what we trained for. We were just really pleased we got there in time. Uh, the, the initial feeling back at station uh, was was one of disbelief of, of, of what we just had to uh, had to endure, followed by uh, immense pride. Uh, we were all so proud of each other, um, the whole station, uh, we're one crew. But the lads were brilliant. It was my first show. The lads were fantastic out in the deck. I didn't have to worry about anything. I didn't have to tell them get the tour up ready. They had it all done. Um, they were they were superb that night. They're heroes in my eyes. They left their families at home that evening, knowing that. The weather was, was crazy, not knowing where they're going to come back. Young kids, the whole lot. In my eyes, they're the heroes. Brave lifeboat crews are ready to tackle anything that the sea can throw at them, thanks to the ingenuity of the RNLI's engineering team. So if you get caught in a storm, the RNLI will be ready and able to come to your rescue. <laughs>